Welcome to Fist Chat, your source for news and discussions in film science and technology, hosted by Steve Kern and Ben Warner. Visit our website at fistchat.com. Hi everyone and welcome to another exciting episode of Fist Chat where we discuss all things uh, related to film science and technology and hopefully have a lot of fun while we're doing that. Um, uh, my name's Ben Warner and I'm joined once again by my good friend and colleague Steve Kern. How are we today, Steve? Good, thanks, Ben. Hi, Fist Chat fans. Hope everyone's having a lovely uh, day. Yeah, it's a bit of a glorious day over here. They were forecasting showers but um, might have to head out this afternoon and uh, enjoy some of that sun wasn't supposed to be there apparently <laughs> <laughs> all right um we're gonna now we missed last week uh, due to some scheduling conflicts unfortunately we were both uh, busy but uh, we're going to uh, pre-record a couple of episodes today uh, because we're going to be off um uh probably during the easter week and uh, we have a couple of things on around the other week so we want to be prepared and make sure that uh, we're still covering uh, Fist Chat during this period and, uh, you know, sort of keeping up to date with all of that. Now, um, today's topic, um, or our first topic, I should say, is um, about choosing the right device for you to use. We haven't spoken about gadgets for a while, so it'd be good for us to, to go through it again. Um, to, you know, I think when we were initially discussing gadgets on Fist Chat, you know, in the early days, uh, you know, there was still a bit of a whiz bang factor to the to the whole notion of what tablets could do what smartphones could do and what's the brand new feature they could do but the reality is is that we've reached a point where they're sort of all on on a par with each other so maybe one can do something better than the other or maybe one has a service that the other one doesn't have that you'd need and whatnot but for the most part you can't really go wrong with a lot of the devices that are out there right now it's just a question of what suits you personally and uh, what you like to use, what you know, wh which service gives you the best um, outcome for what you want to do. Um, and I guess it can be a bit of a minefield for someone who maybe isn't as tech savvy and they're trying to figure out what they're um, wanting to use, but you know, they're seeing all of these options that are available and they go, oh, where do I start kind of thing. Um, have you ever had those discussions with uh, with people like that? I, I know it's always fascinating <laughs> with me because at the end of the day, you have to kind of start with what is it that you need to do? Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's interesting you say that because in three years of Fist Chat, things certainly have changed a lot and uh, you're absolutely right. You know, we've gone from where people started uh, with, you know, uh, say – a tablet or like an iPad and it was an amazing uh, like piece of equipment that just could do so much more than anyone ever imagined that, you know, it was, it was just marvellous. Now when we look at uh, the range of tablets that are out there, the range of phones, the fact that phones are training to get bigger, you know, uh, it, it actually has become kind of confusing. Mm. And uh, I find that at work very often, you know, we talk about, you know, gadgets we've got and, of course, uh, you know, one very popular sort of blog, of course, is how to use your phone or your device better. So it's mm. definitely a topic that's uh, that's important to people because we have to use these devices every day. Well, I guess we're all sort of plugged in and, uh, you know, having – I mean, it's great to have the convenience of, a, in effect, a personal computer in your pocket with your smartphone. Um, and uh, But when it comes down to need, it, you know, for example – there are different types of users. I could imagine that there'd be some users that could um, their entire computing needs would be satisfied with a smartphone. Yeah. Then, then there are others that um, say like us that um, require, you know, say multiple devices to get um, to get things done. Well, it's, uh, it's interesting you say that because hmm. I've got a 4S, iPhone 4S, which um, I find frustratingly small at times when I want to do things that probably are, you know, maybe better suited to, to say something like an iPad or a tablet or, or obviously a uh, laptop. Mm. and uh, But I like the small size of the phone. So I, mm. I'm in a bit of a bind on that, I guess. You know, like I actually prefer to have the smaller device, be able to do less with it just yeah. for ease and convenience. Exactly. And I think that's where, say, a smartphone and a tablet can complement each other. Uh, if um, you use the tablet for more um, for browse, it's better browser for content yeah. um, uh, that a smartphone is. But the thing is, 
if you're out and about and um, you, the smartphone, the size of, say, an iPhone or, there, you know, there are Samsung phones that are that size as well, even though they've got larger phones. There are obviously Windows phones that, that yeah. fit that category as well. Um, the fact that you could just pull it out of your pocket and, you know, do what, whatever you need to do quickly and get it done is um, is amazing too that you, you need to take that into account that you can do that sort of thing. Well, I think the one thing just sticking with phones at the moment, which is really interesting, my uh, last Nokia, the N97 and, of course, the uh, classic Blackberries of four or five years ago yeah. had the physical keyboard Yeah. and I really found them to be great to use. Um, I'm not so sure that I like the touch screen if you want to do, I guess, you know, well, if you want to type anything, I, I would prefer a physical keyboard every oh, time, even if it's a tiny, ridiculously small one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I guess that's the trade-off though um, because you get a bigger screen to do a lot of other things and then you get a keyboard that constantly changes depending on the needs of the app. So I, yeah, guess, it's, yeah. I, guess, I guess it depends on which... Uh, which one you value more in terms of uh, what it can do. But at the end of the day, the market's gone completely away from um, uh, physical keyboards on uh, smartphones. Uh, you know, thanks, Apple. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, uh, that's just how it is. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, you know, having... I mean, there's also this idea of need versus want as well. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> you don't necessarily need a lot of these things if you're not actually going to use it. Now, just right now, um, in recording this fist chat, I've got four devices being used right now. There's the iPhone recording my image. There's the MacBook Pro that's recording all the audio and Steve's image here, your image. Yeah. I've got an iPad that you can probably see the corner of here in the <laughs> in the picture um, that's got all my show notes and I can refer to it if I, we've got anything that we're referring off to the, you know, articles on the internet or whatnot. And I've got a Nokia 520 that I'm using as a stopwatch in front of me that you can probably <laughs> see in the image here too. So... But this is a unique situation. We're creating a video um, and uh, trying to capture it all, all at once to make sure that um, you know it suits our purposes. And then, of course, I'll be um, using my iMac to do the uh, the final edit and get it all together. So there is that need. I have that need to have that many devices um, on me, even though I could probably get maybe I don't need the stopwatch and whatnot. But uh, you know, because I could have something else there. But you know. It is interesting and maybe it's just you have to ask yourself what is it that you need um, and uh, don't go beyond that because at the same time, you don't want to be wasting lots and lots of money having all these devices that maybe like, you know, the, I can't, I've never understood why people would line up at Apple stores to get the, the latest iPad when they had one, they spent $800 on the last one and uh, they're going to spend $800 again on the next one. Well, it's, 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 you know, it is really interesting that you say that because what is the purpose of having a device and, and once you're connected and, and now all your smart devices, whether they're tablets, laptops, desktops or phones, you're connected with. So the next thing exactly as you're saying is what are you using it for and, uh, you know, by and large, it's, it is a question of usage. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we've spoken before about how uh, tablets, particularly the iPad, still don't quite give you enough power or enough options to, to work creatively on them. Yeah. Um, you know, so for me that's always the downside. But as a browser, it's fantastic. And mm. I actually don't mind uh, typing just on the touch screen with the iPad because it's big enough. Whereas yes. I know a lot of people who complain that their fingertips hurt and, uh, you know, they can't, they can't type with one. So I find that interesting. Whereas, you know, as I said, you know, my phone really apart from making phone calls – I think struggles even with browsing, you know, yeah. because more and more these days there's more options on screen, you know, uh, and even though I guess sites are now optimised for mobile devices, the fact is if you have a small screen, you're getting less information at any given moment. Yeah, and and like I said, that need versus want thing too. Like for example, I. Um, needed a retina screen on any iPad I was going to get, which is the reason why I hung out until the first gen retina display, which was the third gen iPad. Now, the subsequent iPads that have come out are obviously better and I really like the um, lightweight nature of the current release, the iPad Air. 
uh, it's still not enough to justify um, buying another one when I've got the the, the thing yeah. that I really wanted, which was the Retina display. Um, that's, that's right. And so you, I think you got to you know kind of think about those things that um, you don't need to keep on upgrading these things just because you know they come out with something that's a little bit better than the last one. Yeah, well, that's right. That's right. But you know there's a great range out there now of devices. So you've got the Windows. Uh, tablets out there mm. now which are basically laptops half a laptop i guess yeah and they they look superb so i've only had a play with with them in store but you know i can't wait to see more of them and you know you see a lot of the uh, larger format phones and the galaxy s5 which was released a couple of weeks ago and you think wow they're mm. lightweight they look good and you know they're, and- they're at least now they're concentrating on things again like battery life and and mm. all the things that uh I haven't been a fan of smartphones for. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, just as a couple of final points too, um, you don't have to worry about um, necessarily being locked into a particular ecosystem if you're using a, a certain type of device. For example, I have hands in both the Apple and uh, Microsoft ecosystems because I utilize both um like cloud services depending on what um, needs I have and of course that also can go across with uh, what Google has to offer so just finally it's you know all a lot of these services are good whether you you know you've got an Android device a Windows phone device or Windows 8 device or um, app, you know Apple's offerings um, you can there is a lot more integration between those three than what you may think there is, and um, it's all uh, all good that way. There, and a lot of them are on par, even though Apple still comes out and says, you know, <laughs> we're the best. But at the end of the day, you know, I think everyone else is just about there anyway. So that's it. As you say, you know, work out what you need, work out what size you want, and go with that. Absolutely. All right, we uh, might move on now. So, yeah, go forth and uh, find the right device for yourself. Um, we'll move on to our news bites, um, our film news bite from theguardian.com. Orson Welles' camera and Citizen Kane scripts to be auctioned. Uh, the youngest daughter of, the, of director and writer Orson Welles is giving film buffs a chance to buy some of his personal possessions, including a camera, scripts and photos from the set of Citizen Kane. Uh, Beatrice Wells uh, discovered the relics last year in boxes and trunks and decided to put them up for auction. In all, she's handing more than 70 items over to Heritage Auctions, which will stage the sale on the 26th of April. And apparently, um, Orson uh, Wells would have preferred the memorabilia to go to film buffs and fans rather than sitting in a museum somewhere, which uh, which is probably quite appropriate, I would have thought, because uh, that's an interesting piece of cinematic history right there. Well, that's right. I mean, you know, the scripts are probably all typewritten, you know. Mm. It's all original stuff. They don't make them like they do anymore. And, of course, we're moving into a brave new world of digital filmmaking. So yeah. it's it's really historic and it is, I'm sure it's an amazing collection. Yeah, absolutely. All right, our science news bite from the ABC. Why do le- why do leaves change color in aut- in autumn? In uh, the US, they call it leaf peeping. In Japan, momijigari, I believe that's what it's <laughs> called. It's when uh, people flock to parts of the country to see leaves change color in aut- in autumn. Leaf spotters. Uh, exactly. Yes, um, and it's uh, an after effect. I'm guessing of photosynthesis and the amount of chlorophyll that are in uh, the leaves, and uh, it's. Um, uh, the shortening days of autumn leads leaves to stop making chlorophyll, meaning that the degraded chlorophyll isn't replaced, hence the change of uh, colour from green to um, to orange and you get that uh, nice effect that occurs. Uh, another, you know, that's even though if you look at it that way, it's very dry and sort of clinical way of describing it, but it gives a very uh, sort of beautiful effect that um, people love to see. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's interesting. Most people don't know that uh, plants and trees have hormones just like mm. humans do. And, uh, yeah, the daylight uh, cycle regulates the uh, levels of hormones and that's that's effectively what causes the leaves to senesce. The, uh, the trees or plants always know what season it is. Yep. 
Unless we, uh, hopefully, we're not changing things too much and they get confused. <laughs> well, they go mainly. Thankfully, they mainly go off daylight hours. So until uh, we change that, uh, the plants should be okay. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and our uh, tech news by also from the ABC. What do malware and mosquitoes have in common? Um, malware seems to be everywhere, and it's incredibly challenging to combat. It can take many forms as an, and is increasingly resistant to to traditional approaches to detect and stop. Uh, instead of relying on a single attack vector, malware will use whatever unprotected path exists to reach its target and accomplish its mission. And while you may, na- may not make the association immediately, mosquitoes are similar to malware in the way they um, sort of uh, attack people and suck their blood. Um, <laughs> so... Um, I can't imagine mal- I, I, I can't imagine malware creators were inspired by mosquitoes, but somehow they um, sort of are having the same effect. It would seem. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, look, I think we've all been affected by malware, and it's awful. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we've all been bitten by mosquitoes, and that's awful too. So, <laughs> so uh, maybe that's close enough. Yeah, exactly. But um, you know, is that uh, we, can we make any distinction between tech and nature there? Well, I, I think you know. The, the analogy that they work in similar ways is, is probably interesting, you know, by stealth and then, uh, you know, they sort of sting you and, and, and they're gone, particularly mm. if you're sleeping. But I think uh, the thing, you know, once again, mosquitoes are very interesting uh, insects in that, you know, they're very sensitive to uh, carbon dioxide and that's actually how they locate their prey. They yeah. can... Uh, effectively uh, find you if you're breathing anywhere. And, of course, if you're in a bedroom and asleep, the carbon dioxide's high in the bedroom, that's how they find you. Mm. I don't know what that's got to do with malware, but uh, certainly... Maybe uh, there's some sort of equivalent, tech equivalent to carbon dioxide that uh, has been given out. Maybe the fact that you've got your firewall turned off or something. Well, and that's the thing, you know, malware knows how to find people who are vulnerable to malware, a bit like mosquitoes maybe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, we might wrap that uh, this episode up there. So thanks again, Steve, for the chat. Anytime. Thanks for chat fans. We'll see you again soon. Absolutely. Don't forget our website, FISTCHAT.com. You can get all of our links there. We've got our ebook, The Fist Report, at fistreport.com. Both the 2012 and 2013 editions are available there for you to have a look at, and it helps to support the show. Uh, we've got our weekly blogs, photography on Instagram and Flickr. And uh, if you think anyone's interested in our weekly discussions on film, science, and technology, then feel free to send them to our website. We greatly appreciate that. Uh, so that's it for this episode. So we'll catch you next time. <laughs>